I'm at a crossroads in my life. Finishing graduate school, I'm going to graduate. I'm going to get a job. I'm going to be a college professor. That's great. That's a great achievement. I feel good about that. But there's something missing. I feel like there's something else that I need to do. And I feel it when I'm out here on the court. Basketball. It's the NBA. I know it seems crazy, but that's my dream. It's now or never. I love to teach. I love my PhD in speech, and that's great. And I love working with the kids and making a big difference in their lives. And that really does mean a lot to me. And I'm certainly uh, not taking a look at my teaching as something that's second best or second place. Hi, uh, yes, this is Ray Harris from the University of Memphis. I was calling about the possibility of setting up an appointment with Jimmy to uh, discuss some possible prospects for the upcoming NBA draft. Okay, that'll be great. My number is area code 901 here in town, uh, 309-1324, and I've got a machine on so you can leave a message. Ray Harris from the University of Memphis. Thank you so much. Uh-huh, bye-bye. He's calling me back. Playing pickup basketball is great. It's a lot of fun. I'm getting a lot better. But I can play pickup games till I'm blue in the face, and the NBA is not going to come knocking on my door. What I really need is a venue to showcase my talent. I've got to put together a team, go into this university intramural league, win an intramural championship. That's going to get me noticed. That's my best chance to get in the NBA. If it's crowded, just go over to the weak side because if there's, if there's a bunch of people over here loading down on our oak, then this other side is going to be real soft, so we just go around the horn and go back on the other end. Right? Okay, we ready? Yeah. Key thing is if you're going to foul, completely foul. Complete your foul, grab their arm, pull it down, pull the ball down. They do not foul and shoot. They get fouled or they shoot. Everybody needs a pure shooter. Now great athletes, they're a dime a dozen. But a true pure shooter is rarer than the finest diamond. Somebody who can spot up, draw the defense out, hit the open three, make all their free throws. That's who I am, and before you know it, that skill's gonna get me in the big leagues. That's the plan. You know what it's all really about for me? It's about being a real man. It's about being my own man. You don't do what other people tell you to do. You do what your heart and your mind and your dreams tell you to do. That's what makes a real man. And that's why I'm out here. One victory at a time. Today is number one. We're going to give it our best shot. I don't feel well. I may not feel well after this. It's looking like a blowout, so 50 to 1,000, I don't know. <laughs> it's going to be a pretty good game, though. Tough, but we played well. Physically out, man, but we're still in it. They haven't blown us out of here. They've earned every point they got. I'm proud of our men, and we're gonna go forward. We're gonna fight it out for the rest of the second half, baby. Hey, Ed, when you come in, man, 
when I run around the side and my guy's got me and you're standing there, you step out and hurt that boy. Remind him why you're out there and cause pain. Remember as you're playing down on the right hand side. All I need is about a step and a half, man. It'll take him a second. The world in a bad shape, ain't nothing we can do. When I look for a job, the man said, I don't have nothing for you to do. I'm in trouble. Come along over my head. Are you serious? He looks kind of short to be in the NBA. I mean, I don't know. Is he good? He seems pretty. said he shot all the points. I wish them luck then. They lost, didn't they? Yeah, and, and we were in that game and they earned it and they barely, and they, didn't, they weren't going to score. I mean, run away. It wasn't like they gave up. They, were, they worked for every bucket they got. So yeah, we played pretty good basketball. Not ashamed of any of that. Made some good shots. I got my 12 points out of it. So I made my double digits, which is always the minimum standard that I'll accept in any basketball game. I was there. I mean, you go on any professional level of sports, and equipment matters. The pro golfers have the best equipment in the world. Pro tennis players have the best tennis rackets. And pro basketball players make their living on the basis of what they can do on the court. And most of that involves running, and so your feet are crucial. You never see guys in the NBA wearing old beat-up tennis shoes. They all have brand new shoes, and there's a good reason for that. It's a competitive edge, and I intend to use that edge to its utmost advantage. That's why I'm here. I want to find the shoes that's going to help me showcase my talent the best. Yeah, that's, that's why I'm getting the cross trainers, yeah. because I, I want one shoe that can work for everything. And my game is uh, not quite exactly uh, aeronautic, so I'm, I'm going with the Reeboks. I, I would feel very comfortable endorsing a certain brand of shoes, but as a future professional athlete, they'd have to talk to my agent before I would come out and publicly give them the free publicity. They would have to, of course, pay me what I'm worth. But I'd be glad to endorse quality products from quality uh, American corporations. What do you think? Should we take a test run? Go over here, shoot a couple balls. I grew up watching Havlicek, Kuzi, Bird, Johnson. I grew up watching all those guys. And, you know, I love the excellence that they exemplified. And I think that the NBA's lost some of that. It's become so much about the flashy dunking and the rebounding and these big, great athletes. But the level of skill has actually gotten a lot worse in the NBA. I bring a throwback to the old days, a work ethic that won't quit, the pursuit of a dream. I'm going to do what it takes to win, I'm going to practice, I'm going to eat right, get in shape for the season, and be ready to go to training camp and try out. And you know what? People will let their guard down, and they won't suspect me. But once I step on the court and I show them what I can do, it's going to happen for me. And I just took, pardon the uh, pun, a tremendous first step with these shoes. Yeah, I'm going to call Jimmy Sexton. See if I can uh, shake some trees loose in this town about getting me in the NBA. It's about time I use my rhetorical skills to my advantage. Uh, yes, Nature, this is Ray Harris from WUMR Radio here in Memphis. I was looking to set up an appointment with Jimmy Sexton and show him some materials related to the NBA draft. I'm on hold. The same thing that's getting me into the league is the same reason I'm still sitting on this phone. I don't give up. Jimmy, this is Ray Harris from WMR Radio here in Memphis. And we have some video materials we'd like to show you related to the NBA draft that uh, might be a good opportunity that you would be interested in for just a few moments of your time. Please give me a call back at area code 901-309-1324 and leave a message about a time that you would like to meet any time next week or beyond at your convenience. Uh, I don't need a lot of time, but I think you'll find something really, really interesting and worth checking out here in the Memphis market, so please give me a call back. My name is Ray Harris. His personal assistant asked me to record a message and to set up a time 
And so she turned the machine on, and I left that message, and he's going to coordinate with her about what time is good next week. And when he sees me and sees what I can do and sees some of the footage and learns a little bit more about this project and what this is all about, getting me in the league, and what that's going to mean to people on the outside and some of the marketing angles and opportunities that uh, will come, he's going to want to be my agent early and grab me early because uh, there's a lot of money to be made here. Every day as a kid, when I grew up, I would go in the gym, I'd shoot a thousand shots a day. Off the glass, free throws, three pointers. I would shoot, and I would shoot, and I would shoot. It was therapy for me. If I had a problem, I'd shoot more. Every artist, every sports figure knows how that you turn your art into therapy. This is my couch. Mercy rule, if one team's up by 20 with three minutes left in the game, game's over. Three minutes. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hate to beat you too, but you know, we've got to learn to live with something. There is backcourt. Backcourt, 10 second, 5 second. Okay. What about Mercy rule in the first half? Nah. <laughs> we don't want to embarrass you. Oh, we want okay. to keep out there playing. Sound up my pony. Look up that old. Good defense up there. Make sure. Proud of you. You're, doing, you're playing well. I you're keep, playing a lot better than I am right I now. Keep my I just shut. feel I feel totally out of rhythm out there. I'm not when I have the ball in my hand, I don't have that normal feeling at all. Well we played a little bit better. Maybe I was a little hasty in jumping into this tournament. Maybe there's a faster route to make it to the NBA. You know, a three-point contest? I mean, and they didn't even invite me. I actually have to walk up and introduce myself. But, you know, come out and show us what you've got. Well, I'll come out. I'll win that three-point shootout. This is going to help a lot because it's not predicated on speed. Nice old fashioned NBA 50 set shot. It's going to be pure, hopefully. I think I'll be in good shape, though. I don't, other than this guy behind me, he's pure, but I don't know anybody else much around here that is, so I feel pretty good. I bet he makes two. I bet he makes two. See? One. Shot it short on that last one, but I got one out of two. Well, they're going to advance the first three, but that's just the, this is just the second round. This is the semifinal round, so they're going to take three, and we'll probably have to shoot off right here, but that's fine. I'd be lying if I said I was happy. I thought I would do better. I did make the third round, so that's something. Today is a dark day. 
and uh, and it, it's going to be hard for me to sleep tonight, and it bothers me. It's about uh, metaphor and the creation of professional scientific identity. Feel confident? You know, I've been doing this stuff for a long time, and uh, I thrive under pressure. And uh, I feel no. I'm a little. I'm a little anxious, but I'm not worried. I know what I'm doing. Nothing's wrong. I misplaced my paper. Where did I put it? In history. Now, where's the one I'm doing? Turn it off for just a second. Turn it off. I need to find this paper. Help me find it. It's disappeared. My sheet. Did you guys pull it? No, it's disappeared. I'm serious. No. Well, I had it in my hand about 30 seconds ago. Things happen. Now, where did the big one go? I didn't go anywhere but in here. Well, it should be in the room. All right. This is beautiful. Check the Good thing I read someone Good thing I read This is perfect. This is going to go so well. Got it memorized? Watch me. I'll go without it. Okay. I would like to begin by telling you a bit of a story that uh, the great Aesop relates about what it means to be a professional scientific practitioner. Well, right now, here we are, the Six Cannons ROTC in week three. We're 0-2 right now, and we're trying to uh, get back on the winning track. Top two teams make the playoffs. If we win tonight, we win our last week, we'll be at 2-2. Two and two. And the team uh, that we would defeat in the fourth week is also the team leading the division, which would give us a tie break having won the last meeting, and we would get into the playoffs. So if we win tonight, we're still in contention. Well, it looks like the other team is in the same position that we were in last week, and they don't have enough uh, guys to show up, so it looks like we'll win by forfeit. Well, far be it for me to trash the ROTC, which is supposed to be about people wanting to defend our country who are committed no matter what. But in this particular instance, it seems that uh, their poor performance, like ours, in the last couple of weeks has apparently motivated a lot of their players not to come. So. I'm real disappointed in that. I'm sure that they had what they felt like were good reasons for missing, but competition, you can't back down. You gotta, you gotta show, you make a commitment in life, you stick to it. Uh, Kimberly, this is Ray Harris from the University of Memphis. I had called earlier a couple of weeks ago and talked with Jimmy about setting up an interview. He'll be back tomorrow, okay. Next week for an hour, and basically, uh, you know, any reasonably convenient time, Monday to Friday, will be fine. Just uh, let me give you a number, and if you could call me back and leave the mess, just leave a message. I'm in the uh, University of Memphis Department of Communication, and thank you very much. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. You know, this is the last week, and every athlete has the set of rituals that they always go through. You know, you wear the same socks, put on the same shoes. Well, I've got the same outfit on, I've got the new shoes on, ate breakfast at the same time, got the same amount of sleep, visited and talked to the same people all day. The ritual looks like it's complete. I have a feeling I'm ready to play tonight. I'm just hoping that the other team shows up. We get the victory, we're in the playoffs, and who can complain about that? I think he can shoot better than a whole lot of people out there, and I'd be more uh, prone to watch the TV. If he was on there, really I think he, I think I think he can do a whole lot of a whole lot of good for the NBA. Bring some spark back to it, like Dennis Miller did to ABC. 
So we had the forfeit. Nah, I did. We had the forfeit. We ain't got no. That's another forfeit. You got another win. Well, I'm sorry we didn't get to play, but you know. I am thrilled, but not surprised. Our commitment, if not our excellence, has taken us this far. Total, complete, 100% concentration and intensity. There is nothing as important as winning a playoff game. You've got to be mentally and physically prepared, totally committed to play team basketball. Look at them. No speed. All of them look like they drink beer. They look like they had a beer before they came to the game. Uh, well, we'll just have to wait and see. That's why they bother to play the game. Just so one more time. One more time. Well, I'm not shooting well, and the last couple times down, I haven't been able to get back. I wasn't helping the team, so I took the time off to get my legs back up from under me. Let Jason take my place. He'll at least give them a different look, and they seem seem to have helped. They seem to come out a little bit better. Yeah, I, I love the guys I've got now, and I'm having fun with them because they're my friends, and I love playing with them. But in terms of the NBA, you don't worry about getting physically overpowered and dominated because they've got big, strong guys, so you can get the ball up and down the court, and they've always got somebody that can handle the ball. So it's a much more stable half-court situation. I will make you be mine. This may be the end of this tournament for me, and I may not win my intramural championship, but it's not necessarily the end of my basketball career. It's not over until David Stern says it's over. <laughs> so that's how I feel about it. I really believe that uh, somebody will pick me up. So I made some nice moves out here. Got some guys up in there, fake back, took a step. <laughs> There'll be a place for me on the roster. It should, I may have to bounce around for a while till I find the right coach who likes me and appreciates what I can do, but it's out there. It's just a matter of commitment and hard work. and. You gotta pursue your dreams, life is short. Ah. You have to be a pro athlete to be in that chair and you look like you fit very well, Thank you. actually. Thank you. I feel comfortable. This would be an interesting uh, piece here to see how you kind of fit in. Well, that's the, there's the sky hook right there. I mean, Abdul Jabbar made that look pretty good, but uh, you've got your own style. There's a three pointer. You got it. I'm looking for. Well, I think it's obvious you could say you have a non traditional style, which by its very nature means that they haven't seen play like this in quite a while. And think of, think of how many NBA players' backs would get hurt as they try to reach down to try to guard you. Well, I appreciate you coming by and giving me the oh, opportunity to, to, uh, to assess your ability and uh, particularly for you to be able to, we haven't had too many people who's been able to sit in this chair and their feet didn't go over the end of that. You're one of the few people that's really been able to turn this into a footstool. Well, your encouragement means a lot because I know that there are a lot of people that couldn't see the obvious possibilities there, but you're a trained professional and if you think it can happen, that just reinforces deep down what I already believe. Well, you know, the Cubs may win the World Series one day, too. We wish you the best, and you uh, dribble between their legs, and you, hey. you show them the Memphis style of stuff. Waiting went great. I was so thrilled. I was really afraid when I went in there that he wouldn't take this seriously, and that he'd look at me and say, oh, you don't have a shot. But, you know, once he saw the tape, 
and once he saw that there was a real chance of doing something there, I think he began to see some marketing possibilities for him and myself. And because I'm in a PhD program, I can communicate well, I'll do well on TV and radio. I think he sees a real marketing opportunity, and who knows, this thing may just happen yet. Uh, his professional hopes uh, have to be in a different profession. I think that's probably the best way to say it. This is what it's all about, the first step of the NBA, first step of your dream. 57 picks will be made at the NBA draft. Here it is. With the first pick in the 2001 NBA draft, the Washington Wizards select Kwame Brown from Atlanta, Virginia, Arizona. The Los Angeles Clippers select Tyson Chandler from the Ringwoods High School. And obviously the high school kids they picked are tremendous uh, examples of physical fitness and conditioning and size, but I'd like to think that uh, whatever disadvantages I have in size and form, I make up for with experience and determination. I'm older than those kids. I've been through more than most of those kids. Uh, I've played a lot more basketball probably than a lot of those kids over the years. and. Uh, I think I've still got a shot, but it does give you hope. It goes to prove that just because you don't play college ball, that doesn't mean you can't make the NBA. Don't bother me down.